Medicine Sans Frontier released a damning report this week outlining the many times that it tried to raise the alarm about Ebola in West Africa to no avail. At the time, the World Health Organization and country governments accused the organization of trying to cause undue panic. This is the latest in a series of critiques of the WHO's lack of response and lack of leadership on Ebola. The World Social Forum in Tunisia this week brought together global civil society activists, including leaders from ActionAid, Oxfam, Greenpeace, and others. The resulting statement of intent argued that development implementers need to do more to address the causes of poverty and inequality. It also warned that governments have come under too much influence from corporations. They recommended further involving beneficiaries, exploring additional partnership opportunities, and not completely excluding the private sector, but really working with them to improve their practices. There were two milestones this week in implementing Australia's new aid policy. The Australian government wrapped up a final hearing in an inquiry into the role of the private sector in reducing poverty and improving economic development. It also launched the Innovation Exchange, a new unit in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade that is designed to look at more innovative and effective approaches to delivering aid. A group of donors, humanitarian organizations, and the private sector came together this week to launch the Humanitarian Leadership Academy. The initiative aims to train more than 100,000 aid workers and volunteers across about 50 countries to be able to respond in the case of a humanitarian crisis. We also launched a new series this week, The Future of International NGOs, which will look at the evolving nature of corporate nonprofit partnerships. You can join that conversation using hashtag futureingo. That's it for this week, but stay tuned to devx.com for all your global development news.